Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to TCR, Trinity Competitive Racing, and we are back for round 9 out of 14. It's hard to believe that we've already gotten uh, almost two-thirds of the season through, but uh, today we got a good one because we are here in Europe for the Belgian Grand Prix, a fan favorite track by most, uh, feared by many though, as there's a couple of corners on this track that are gonna get some people tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, it's just a question of who. My name is Camden Luca, tonight in the booth uh, per usual. Alongside me is my fellow Elite Series driver, uh, Sir Charles. Uh, out of 10, uh, from 0 to 10, uh, what would you give this track on your personal liking? Oof. Um, honestly, in terms of just driving it and then generally like enjoying it, I mean, maybe not in this game, but in, like in general, probably like a I mean, it's right up there. I'd say. I mean, it's one of my favorite tracks. It's even though I'm not necessarily quick here, it's been very kind to me. Um, like say in the past. Um. You know, I'll, I'll brag a little bit. I guess more where I got my first TCR win, and actually where I made my first uh, platinum, well now elite uh, series start. So it's been a pretty good uh, track for me. Like I said, it's just one of those tracks, uh, super fun to drive. Lots of elevation changes, lots of tricky corners, lots of fast corners. It's just it's got a good combination of everything. I feel like so. Um, yeah, we'll see how this. Ends up. Meanwhile, B Swish is on provisional pole. Must be said, medium tires. So that's a good start for him. But yeah, I'm looking forward to see what this uh, has in store for us this evening. And we got a pretty tight points battle too. So uh, should be exciting. We should probably go over that right now because, like you said, the championship battle between some guy and F1 nerd is back down to single digits and. Uh, really, it's going to come down to those two because P3 in the points is Pilot. He's not here tonight. The D Swish is P4 in the standings, but uh, he's about a country mile back from the top two. Yeah, and this, this could be a, a really uh, important uh, uh, juncture here in the championship as it is, it is a sprint race. And if you see, there are only eight drivers, so as long as you finish you will get a point in the sprint. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that. And like I said, there's a lot of points on offer for our contenders here. D-Swish coming in the pits. I have noticed that he is not the only one that has put on the medium tires. A Pine, I gotta talk about Pine because he's only been here for a couple of races, but uh, he has a knack for being in fifth. He finished 5th back in Silverstone, 5th last week in Imola, and, uh, well, if you look at it now, he's 5th on the leaderboard, so uh, he's giving Chavar a little run for his money when it comes to that oatmeal consistency. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, kind of giving him a run for money, too, was kind of the best of the rest behind the top few guys, you know, D-Switch, F1, or some guy, and probably Connor as well. It's, it's kind of... Jabbar has kind of been the leader of the pack behind um, so far this season, so it'll be interesting to uh, see. Well, looks like Pine will be joining him in that race anyway. It's, it's also worth noting that uh, Pine did that lap on medium, so uh, certainly a very respectful lap to do that on the medium tires. I have you know, noticed. Connor's on. Never mind. Uh, he's not on. I thought he was on another lap, but he's not. Oh, he yeah, it looked like flat. he just, yeah, no, I think he just turned off the battery. He was uh, going pretty quick, but I think he backed out of it. Someone who is on lap, though, is some guy. He's currently Can't holding a, yeah, narrow point speed over F1 nerd. Yeah, single digits, nine points between those two, and some guy... Uh, I don't know if this is fair to say, uh, he's on a six-race losing streak, uh, which to most is not that much, but uh, when you're talking about the points leader, uh, it does start to question things, but uh, he responds and goes provisional pole. Now, when some guy hasn't necessarily been the fastest qualifier, 
The one time he sat on pole, which is last week, he didn't seem to have much pace, so... I don't know, maybe that's a bad sign for some guy, but... Mm -hmm. It's always good to have pace, I feel like, at the beginning. Uh, consistency is the biggest thing, and, mm -hmm. you know, we are getting to the point, Charles, to where we're going to have to start talking about the two strikes, the two races that don't count towards your championship, because if you look at the stats, some guy has three fourth-place finishes. F1 Nerd only has one finish outside the podium, so this this championship really could come down to whoever has the two worst races, you know, it, this could be the first season where the championship yeah. is decided after the season is over. But have they all been? I feel like F1 nerd. Has he been to every single race? He's missed one race. He missed Britain. Okay, well, so there's one right there. I'm saying some guy's been to every single race. I think so. Or no, he did miss one race, didn't he? I think some guy missed one race. He's not not yet. Uh, some guy's been okay. here to every race. So, I mean, that's a, that's a few points in some guy's favor right there, so. Um, Speed had, meanwhile, jumped up into P2, so a good lap for him. Ooh, D-Swish just had a bit of a tank slapper out of turn number one there. Best start to his lap. He gets through Ratty on pretty cleanly, and that, that is going to be the spot we have to look for, as it looks like a couple of people are actually going up through that area right now. Yeah, well, Connor just finished the lap. Let's see what Jabbar's coming through at. Never mind. Jabbar to the line, though. Improved by three tenths. F1 nerd. Yeah, that was F1 nerd. He got the Red mixed up. Uh, tomato, tomato. Either way, uh, they've both been doing really good this season, and actually, uh, they're looking for another Constructors Championship, which would put Chabar at three. Now, I know that's not the most, because Seafree's just, he, he's got everybody beat by a country mile when it comes to that, but I think we gotta look up who's got the most Constructors Championships, because Chabar, he's gotta be up there, a, at least in the top three. Yeah, definitely, and D-Swish... Almost half a second up. Um, this is going to be, should be a pole lap, at least provisional pole lap. But if you look at the time, keep in mind, this uh, takes almost two minutes to get around here, especially when you're not pushing. I don't know if he'll have enough time to get around, get in, get out, and set another lap time. Yeah, easy pole, that's a big lap. So it might not. It might not matter. That was a really good. Let's see what he, uh, F1 nerd. F1 nerd is in P2. Also, really saw the lap by those guys. Yes, yeah, five minutes. I mean, I mean, that's at least him an extra minute, I guess. But you, you know, you do spend a little bit on pit road because, you know, if you've been in this game, you know, your crew members have zero urgency getting you in and out. So that's gonna be one thing to keep an eye on. You have to. Uh, have to be aware that it does take a long time to get around this track, especially, especially if you're someone who's trying to do usually those three laps in qualifying. Um, you can't really uh, afford to take your time, if you will. That's actually a really good point, because the only corner you can really cut on this track to get back to the pit sooner is the ones that Connor is going through right now, turns 5 and 6. But even then, that's a very risky play to try and cut that area of the track because it, it is pretty bumpy off the course there. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. There's not really a whole lot... There's not a whole, whole lot of places you can really cheese the corners um, to, to make up time getting back to the pits, so... I guess you can kind of cut the last corner, but you don't want to... It's also risky because if you overdrive it, you're missing the pits entirely. So, <laughs> so I think we have a now, new. Connor and go ahead. I was gonna say Connor and Pine, who are on their laps. This will be their final laps. Oh yeah, definitely. Unless if Chabar didn't turn all the track rules on, and Connor for some reason is able to go backwards here after he gets to the finish line. 
Let's hope that's not the case, though. Connor about half a second up. New sector 2, let's see what he's got. Oh, so I'm just in the P4. These are very solid laps you guys are putting in. Now Pine is coming. Oh, Pine's invalidated. But he's done a good job. He saved up his battery. So he'll, he'll just go again here. But it's not ideal to have another lap on your... Another very long lap on the softs. It's certainly not ideal. Yeah, one of the longest laps in Formula 1 is right here lap. at this track. Yeah. Probably the only the only the only one that really came close to I guess contending would have been Singapore, but in a short lap time there. So. Let's see what Pine's time is after Sector One ends. He is up, but not by much. Yeah, it's Sector One. It's actually a decent chunk through Sector One. Sector 2 is where most of the time is made up, all that last you can't beat, so you can make or break you as well. Okay, Charles, so this is another one of those tracks to where I might have to quiz you on the corner names, because uh, all the corners do have unique names around here, so uh, off the top of your head, what do you, uh, well, well, there should be one that's pretty obvious. With El Rouge and Radion, there's Kuan, which is the really fast one. Um, there's the bus stop, which is no longer a bus stop. <laughs> um, there's No Name, which I think might actually have a name now, which no one will, no one really cares about. Um, <laughs> Blanchmont, and they just go through Blanchmont or something. Mm -hmm. Somewhere on that straightaway, isn't it? Yep. Somewhere on that straightaway. I'm not. Oh, and what's... Oh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on turn one. You should know this. Don't, don't say it just yet. Um... Shoot, what, what, what's turn one? I think. Uh, it is La Source. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but that's how it's spelled. Yeah, yeah, I think that's correct. But And then, of course, there's the Kimmel Straight, which everyone knows. Um... Connor, uh, Connor might be lost right now. He's uh, he's going into the Belgian woods here. Not sure what he's doing. <laughs> I'm not sure he knows what he's doing. Oh, lights out and away he go. He just did a race start right there. <laughs> Accelerated in neutral and shifted in the first. Interesting. Yeah. Guy is right behind B-Swish. Uh, that'll be interesting to keep an eye on. It is getting very cloudy, though. Um, granted, they're on the lap, so I don't think there could be any rain, but, you know, it's Belgian force. It does get weird. Uh, some guy is slightly down. B-Swish is slightly up on his time. F1 nerd... Tenth up on his time. Oh, but he invalidates, so that is his qualifying over. Chance for some guy to jump ahead of his championship rival here. D-Swish, D-Swish up by four tenths. This is not a this is not a contest. See what some of them guys doing. Up by a tenth and a half. So he is on pace to jump ahead of F1 Nerd at this point. Chibari I'm surprised is F1 down. Nerd is still is still accelerating. I mean, I don't think he's close to some guy, but he he could be giving some guy a hint of slipstream here. Yeah, Let's see what some guy does through the final chicane. That's a big lap from it. E swish. What does some guy do? He does just barely jump ahead of F1 nerd. That was actually Chabar that was ahead of him. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I, I do not think Chabar proved on his lap. And that is qualifying. And just like that, D swish, one of the strongest qualifiers of the Challenger series. 
uh, doing what he does best here, getting pole position by a whopping six tenths of a second. Yeah, that is that's definitely the biggest margin we've had all year. Granted, obviously the longest lap time which helps a little, but good grief. He did have some pace last week in the Elite Series. Uh, he did race last week, and his pace was pretty good. And not just him, but you're having a lot of Challenger guys going up to Elite and seriously contending, and one of them is starting P5. Speeden's pace last week was super good. Mm -hmm. um, I do just want to give a quick shout-out in the comments. Uh, Chabar... Uh, his traditional nickname is Oatmeal, but PC gave him a new one. Mr. Clockwork. <laughs> I don't know what to think of that one. Apparently we have... How does Kluka know this? Because Kluka, I think, is communicating with Speeden... I, I can hear why him. Is, he's he's talking to somebody that's in the race. Why isn't so why isn't Kluka racing then? I mean, he's obviously uh not busy at the moment. Well, because most weeks he can't show up the challenger. Most weeks okay. he can show up to elite, and when you go up to elite, you sacrifice your challenger time, so he can't. He could, he could just stay to reserve, so he could race in both in theory. I mean, I'm just speaking up. But anyway, it's. So, rain late in the race, which could make things interesting. Ooh. I don't think that's the sprint, though. He's obviously, uh, not the sprint. I like Chi Chi Bang Bang better than Mr. Clockwork. Yes. Oh, yes, I did see that one. <laughs> uh, I love the fact that Chabar has his own fan base that it tunes in just about every week. It's, it's pretty cool. If we had a most popular driver award in TCR, Chapar would hands down yes. get that award. All right, boy. Well, uh, tire strategy is all over the place, so I will let you start with predictions, Charles. Okay. Why are you on hard to sprint? Did Pine forget there was, there was a sprint? Wait, Char there, there Charles. Is no sprint. Charles, yeah, I've been, <laughs> I've been kind of waiting until the formation lap. Um, what made you think there was a sprint? I thought there was a sprint this week. <laughs> no, there's not. What made, what made you think that? I don't know. <laughs> I really, I wanted to tell you in qualifying, but I just wanted you to wait until the race. <laughs> okay. Did you? Is there an error on the schedule? Right, let me. Let me. Hold There's on. one. The, the next one is the finale in Abu Dhabi. We we started the season with a sprint and we end the season with a sprint. Which honestly, I like that. The props to see for doing gonna... that. Yeah. Uh, okay. I I I don't know. I don't know what where I was getting that from. Um. Interesting. That's uh, that's one of the moments of the season <laughs> in the booth. It's definitely a moment of, <laughs> during the season. I don't know where I got that from, but anyway. Um. So anyway, I, I'm going to go D Swish winning. I mean, I feel like it's it's kind of inevitable. Um. And then I think F. I think F1 Nerd is going to be P2. He's going to continue to put the pressure on some guy. And I'm going to put Connor in P3. Mm. I, I think Mr. Fourth Place is going to do it again. I think some guy will be in P4. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Damn. All right, so I am going to say that some guy is going to get back in the win column. I, I like his strategy. I, I like his pace. You know, he's not the best qualifier in the world, and he's up there in second, so... I'm going to go some guy P1. I'll go with, uh, you know what, I'll go F1 Nerd P2. And then I'll do, I'll do, mm, I'll do D-Swish. I'll do the top three, but in a different order. All right, well, get your popcorn, get your drinks, 
Whatever gets you comfortable because it is going to get good. Five lights. Lights out and away we go from the Belgian Grand Prix. Who gets off the line the best? Eastwich gets a great jump, but it's a short drive down to turn one. He has the preferred line. F1 Nerd with the switchback, though, doesn't get the acceleration. He and some guy are side by side, and F1 Nerd gets ahead. Shabar and Speeden side by side. Oh, and Speeden! I think Or kind of forced him into a mistake there. Stuck the nose in there. Oh, up front. This gets spicy. Oh my goodness, are we gonna go three wide here? On board with some guy, and I think they're gonna settle this. Wow. Now some guy and Connor still side by side. Speed and now all the way back up to their rear bumpers. Connor sails it off into that turn right there. Connor trying to make quick work with the softs. Probably not the start he was looking for. Well, it looked like he was gaining like three spots there at one point. Wow, what a crazy start. Great racing by these guys. No contact, it looked like, uh, despite all that argy barginess. And if we oh, take Jabbar! a look. Jabbar! That's a good, good save by Jabbar. Just got a little too much on the curb. Well, uh, I, I spoke too soon, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but as we take a look at the positions gained and lost, I don't know how, but we only had one position swap in all of that, and that was for second and third. A lot of side-by-side -side action. It looks like Speedin has a really fast car in a straight line. He was all over the gearbox of Connor there. And this is one of those tracks where setup can make a huge difference as well. You know, do you sacrifice straight line speed for Sector 2? Do you leave yourself vulnerable for the straights? Kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't sort of situation. Ooh, take a look at this F1 nerd uh, from the driver's perspective up through Ar Rouge and Radion. That is that is hot. Come some guy. Speaking of straight lines to speed, not on the battery and you know, made that an easy Oh, whoa, wow! Pulling yeah, yeah, some Houdini tricks right there. <laughs> well, you saw the same thing I did. Oh, Joby at the back has crashed out, and that is a virtual safety car. That is out of turn seven. Probably good thing it's a VSC, but VSCs are anticlimactic. Like that, that just literally does nothing for the eight, especially this early on. Yeah, I don't think that D Swish or Connor should even consider pitting at this point. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I gotta say though, uh, we've had a few drive-throughs in the past off of restarts. I'm thinking of a couple people. I'm not gonna say it though because I don't want to uh, do another commentator's curse this race. So now it's down to seven. Joby made it a lap and a half, but his race cut prematurely. It looks like no drive throughs but what a great restart for Connor. Same, same for D-Swish. I mean, D-Swish really... Oh, look at the gap. D-Swish gained half a second on his lead there. When Connor... Per I think Connor purposely let off the gas there. So he can get some DRS here. Hey, he doesn't get the best exit, though. He has to use a bit of the battery. He might be using a little too much there. Uh, he's going to have DRS. He should get F1 Nerd. But Connor has a much tighter line through Radion, and this should be an easy overtake. I think Speedin's going to get F1, or Speed might go for both of them here. It looks like Speedin, that thing, he's got that thing trimmed down for a straight line. Oh, and he almost uses it. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I'm like a downforce. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen when you have a uh, setup that is maybe zero zero wings. I'm, I'm not saying it is. I don't know if it is, but I wouldn't be surprised. I feel like zero is a bit too. This isn't Monza. This is a bit too extreme for that. Like Monza. Oh, speeding. I don't know, man. He cannot go through the corners. 
Oh, but he hits him, though. Contact, and he goes sliding sideways and contact again with the Haas, and that is disaster for Speedin. That could be disaster for Connor, too. I'm not sure if he got wing damage in that or not. I think he made it out okay. It doesn't look like there's any visible damage, but like I said, that doesn't really mean much in this game. Yeah, they were going through uh, turn 12. Honestly, from what I saw, it looked like Speedin might have turned in a little too far, and at that point, with how light his car was, uh, there wasn't much he could have done. <laughs> and now everyone's spread out. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> Yo, a seven-car race, everybody's spread out. Uh, at Belgium, of all places, Pine? where things can get spread out. Yeah, Pine is a bit, is kind of close to... Um, Connor, but I'm not sure. I think Pine, I'm not sure if we'll try to make a move here. Pine, I think, is just comfortable to stay in touch on the hard tires. Looks like Connor does not have a straight line speed car, so we'll see if Pine decides to do anything. It's not Probably smart, you know, Salsa are still faster at this point. You know, he could have definitely dumped the battery if he wanted to and gotten them. Pine is in a very uh, special situation compared to everybody else because uh, he's going to be on the quicker tires at, at the end of the race, and uh, who knows, he might get his uh, best career finish. He might get a fourth this week. Good through these corners. Seconds. One and a half seconds. Yeah, may may maybe Connor does have a little bit of wing damage. He's not catching Chabar. It's as fast as Connor was looking in the early stages of the race. Um. Yeah. So if I was Pine, I'd just wait for the Kimmel straight and blast past him there. But. I feel like this chicane could be a lot more racier if it were a little more wide by the apex because it's a great overtaking spot you know last corner uh very hard on the brakes but seems like it's really almost impossible to truly go side by side through there uh, cleanly yeah definitely although i've also heard and as you see now pine is now on the the battery. Also heard it's nowhere near realistic. Pine breezes past Connor. Right back where he belongs. At 213 miles per hour. The top few are slowly starting to come back together. Down to a second and a half. Was up to two seconds at one point. Some guy. Well, as soon as I say that. I'm getting a request for more Chabar screen time. Uh, I, I hate to say it, but Chabar's kind he's of in about, no man's land right now. No, no, he's about to get some, because I think he's about to get past. Oh, the next lap here. Ah, Pine. Yeah, Pine is... He is eating him up here. Look at that gap. Oh, Chabar, yeah, Chabar, well, he didn't do himself any favors there in those couple of corners, but... Yeah, Pine is closing in, but with Pine's pace, I know it's good, but after he gets by Chabar, he's got a long way to go until he gets to F1 nerd. Chabar on the battery, on corner exit. Pine has about the same amount of battery here. As Chabar, so That's good pace from the Alpatari. Yeah, I think Pine's gonna make easy work of Chabar here. Oh, essentially with Chabar gets a bad run like that, you see her Pine actually lift through El Rouge. He wasn't quite sure what was gonna be, what was gonna happen there. Actually, doing funny moves in case Chabar lost it. She really didn't come close to doing, but. Well, Sierra, you got your Chabar time. <laughs>
uh, you saw him get overtaken. <laughs> You're welcome. Ooh, and Jabbar now on the grass there. Oh no! Yeah, Jabbar, I'm not sure. Like, he's he's really struggling here this past lap or so. I don't know. Yes. I, I don't see how he could have gotten wing damage or anything, but it seems like he's just kind of all over the place right now. Yeah, and I th think the way he's going is going to be in danger of losing another spot. There's Connor. Which I don't know. I, th I think Connor's dealing with a little bit of damage. I, I gotta believe. I agree. Sorry, I was on board Jabbar there. Jabbar, you know how that wall kind of sticks out there at the exit of was it the turn at the end of Sector 2 there? I thought Jabbar was gone. I thought he was, by, I thought he was gone there. I thought yeah, that is uh, Stavalot. I, I do not think I pronounced that correctly, but... It's Stavalo. Stavalo, okay. Yeah, that sounds more uh, Belgian. <laughs> Connor in the pit to see if he changes his wing. I was about to say, if I were Connor, I would just pit regardless, just because you're, you're losing too much time in this process, and he's no not, change. really. Now that could have just been a you forget to press the button or whatever, because you know Codemasters likes to do that because who knows. Um, but anyway, thing. That's really interesting at the end of this race. I know it's like well, some guy is slowly chipping in these switches. I almost say that's been around 1.5 and it goes right back up. So. Maybe not, but when they get onto the next tires, you think that some guy could be on the faster tire. Unless they both go to hards, which they might. And now the question for D Swish is when does he pit? Because Connor just. Ooh, this is a nice camera angle. Ooh, look at that. Uh, D Swish, now, where is his tires at? Because some guy isn't really losing much ground to D-Swish, and I think he actually just gained a couple of tenths here in this past sector. Uh, and what does D-Swish do? Does he stretch it and go to mediums? I mean, I, that's got to at least be in the back of his mind. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, D-Swish goes into the lap. You're D-Swish. I mean, as long as... I mean, really, as long as the other guys don't get within DRS, I mean, just kind of keep chugging along here. If you're D-Swish, you do probably want to get a little bit of an undercut, knowing that they'll probably be on fresher tires. Alright, well, let's get some more Jabbar screen time. He has caught back up to Pine, who had a bit of a bad last sector there. Oh, yeah, he, he gets that all wrong through Radion, and this should be an easy overtake for Jabbar. So that was yes, weird. Chabar Chabar had those couple of laps where he was just all over the place, and now he he looks like he did at the start of the race. Well, Pine lost a full second to the guy to F1 nerd at la like in the last half lap. So I don't know what Pine did, but I think he probably had a bit of trouble like Chabar did through that last lap there. And now the down the gap's definitely coming down to uh, D-Swish. So if I'm D-Swish, I'm probably going to pit this lap. You don't want to give F1 Nerd any more advantage than you have to in terms of DRS. Yeah. Yeah, Taking the mediums from here would definitely be a stretch. I think, you know what, I think he's going to do it because he just burned a ton of the battery down to 14%. I'd be shocked if he doesn't hit. Yep. Now, this is one of the trickier pit lanes in all of F1 on both entry and exit. A lot of time to be gained and lost. Now, let's see what tire he puts on. Mediums. Mmm. So that'll certainly pay off in the first few laps of this stint, but 
come the end of the race, it could be a little dicey. Now, now the other question is now, um, what is F1 Nerd and some guy doing? Will they be stretching till about lap, you know, 13, 14, putting on the softs? Um, I think that's certainly uh, realistic and probably what they'll think about doing. Boy, the DRS here, especially on that first straightaway, is is something. A pine just uh, got right back in within range of Chabar, and this is a fight for uh, P3 for the time being. Pine Chabar definitely got a little wide there. That's another warning. We already has one. <laughs> Uh, track <laughs> Pine has been very good about not getting penalties uh, the past few weeks. So that is one thing I will say. Um. Oh, well, they both missed that turn, but yeah, I believe Pine. Pine's definitely looking at soft in the end of this race. It should be anyway. Oh, that dude, you're right about that corner. Turn 15, that Ray Hander. If you get the curbs wrong, uh, you're done. <laughs> Your race yeah. is over. one of the many corners of this track that personally gives me anxiety when I race. That seems the one turn that ends my race more often than not as we have... Oh, that might just not finish game. Oh, Jabbar misses the apex again. But he gets a good exit. Well, now, if you do miss the apex in turn one, you can get a good exit, so you can kind of use it, but I mean, obviously you don't want to do that. And I believe Pine is going to breeze past him as these two. Probably not the last time they could have beat this race. <laughs> Pine's been on those hard tires for uh, the whole race so far, and you can definitely see them uh, coming into play in these slower corners, I mean, look at just, in this past sector alone, he's gapped Jabbar by half a second. Yeah, and where, and where you've probably started to feel the wear right about now on the mediums, definitely. Um, the hards are just getting into the groovy zone. So here's the thing, though. I don't, I don't know if these medium runners are really close to pitting. If they're going to be doing a reverse D-swish, which, uh, speaking of D-swish, he's about to make an overtake, uh, we could have a few more laps before they pit. Yeah. And again, this is probably not catching uh, speed in at the time you really want to here, because obviously for D-swish, you're not going to pass them until F1 are into the pits, so soon to say that. But if you're... Uh, D switch I'm not passing F100 until DRS straight. Remember, D switch does not have the most straight line speed, and speed in definitely does. F100 on the hards is interesting. Let's take a look here. In a turn one, these two both get by F1 Nerd. F1 Nerd still coming out of the pit lane. A Connor's going to be right on his tail here, but I think F1 Nerd's going to get him. switch. Can he get past speed in here? I'm not sure if he's going to. Oh, this has to be annoying for D-Swish. Oh, that's not gonna work! Ah, they make contact! Speed in! This time is able to save the car. Yeah, and D-Swish left. <laughs> he did not leave him that much room, but I think he left him just enough. D-Swish was definitely much braver on the brakes there. Of course, that's probably just a concept of having significantly fresher tires, and if, if for D-Switch's race, he needed to make that overtake happen right there. Um, that's just something, you know, if you're D-Switch, you're just, you're just rolling your eyes like, come on, man, you're, you're a full pit stop behind, let's not, no need to race it like your life depends on it, it's just kind of one of those sayings where, you know, I mean, it's fair game, but I'm sure, you know, if the, when, whenever the, re the roles are reversed, I'm sure D-Switch will remember that and uh, probably not cut speed in any slack. <laughs> hey, 
I think he's lucky that he's racing Speeden in that scenario and not somebody else. Just saying. Yeah, true. Oh, that, was, that was actually a decent save by Speeden. Speeden probably knew once he hit and in, went into the turn on what was going to happen there, but yeah. I would say your top three. These were sets of fastest lap, not surprising. Your top th three are definitely looking at putting on the soft tires here at the end. And speed in and fifth. There we go, Leapfrog. I'm gonna slip in line at the last second there, definitely showing his straight line speed in that scenario. Yeah, Pine is probably rolling his eyes a bit because he knows, you know, he's, he's got m much more battery than Spar does at this stage. Yeah. I feel like this this pair is definitely faster with Pine in front of him than Spar's. These guys are just making little mistakes whenever one gets in front of the other, and they can't really pull away, but I think Pine definitely has more grip. And it's going to be real interesting when he come back to the Kimmel straight for the next time, because Pine will be looking to overtake Jabbar, certainly, and D-Swish is joining the party now. Hey, I think we forgot about something, Charles. Take a look at the sky. Oh, yeah, it could be raining. Yeah. Is that Pine's play? Is he playing the long game to, work to the rain? Yeah, I really like Pine's strategy at this point in the race. Mm. Especially now that some guy pits. No Chabar is going to be pitting any lap now. Right on key. They both? What? Wow. What? Hmm. <laughs> some guy probably anticipating the rain puts on the softs. Wow, that's like interesting. Pine, you should just stay. Yeah, and Pine's probably gonna put on the medium. He puts on the softs. Like, why didn't you just stay out another lap? You are, like, you were faster than Shibar. Stay out another lap or two. Oh my goodness! Look at this, Charles. We might have a three-wide scenario here going into the straightaway. Look at this. Nowhere for F1 nerds to go. He's just gonna fall speed. And he's gonna split the middle. He, he's gonna get both of them! What a move! Some guy on the fresh soft, he backed out early on that. He was playing, he was playing a long game there, but yeah, I believe some guy, he's got, he's got the softs on. It's a long ways to go to the end of the race on the softs. The thing is, I think he's anticipating we're making a, another pit stop in this race. He should be much faster than D-Swish in this scenario. But now... Or, I mean, F1 nerd, sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah, but no, I mean, hey, like, depending on how these drivers adjust to the rain, if it gets here, and some guy, for the next five laps, he's going to be quicker than V-Swish, just based on tires. Um, F1 nerd, though, he knows... he. We're getting down to the point of the season to where we really need to start talking about the championship battle, and I think both of these guys have it in the back of their mind that this spot right here is super important. This lap on the hards for F1 nerd. Yeah, but if Pine can slingshot past F1 nerd here, which I think he will slingshot and gauge. Gives him the space, and off he goes. So now some guy has one man to beat. As of now, he's five seconds up the road. Yeah, some guy will be faster in the next few laps. When's the weather coming? <laughs> will it get here? <laughs> you, you think Shabar has seen enough of Pine this race? That's another overtake for Pine.
Yeah, you know, I'm not entirely sure why he did it. I would have gone another couple laps and get a little tire offset on Jabbar. But... Yeah, they're both catching Connor, who's catching Speedin, who is on ancient tires at this point. And this is a good point here, because with the rain coming, or we, what we assume it rains when, you know, if, if, if some guy gets the fastest lap here, that that will that point will stick. Because, I mean, I don't think anyone else is going to be getting it, especially if it starts raining. Yeah, not even close. A 44.6. Uh, I think even if the weather doesn't come, Charles, that's probably going to stand. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's a commentator's <laughs> curse. Pine <laughs> just showed me up. Great work by the AlphaTauri driver. Wow. Well, that, you, get an extra that's eight. embarrassing <laughs> on my part. Well, and what some guy is probably taking on himself up, some guy has 70% of his battery. If you'd have used any part of his battery, you probably could have easily gotten it, because Pine absolutely dumped the battery on that lap. Oh, look wow. at this! Speedin', they're switching back oh. all over the place! Speedin' drips through turn six, and Connor gets him back. Yeah, well, that's what 14-lap uh, old mediums will do. Speedin's probably just praying for rain at this point. I <laughs> question Man. Pine's strategy, but the way he's going, I mean, he's going to get these guys regardless. He probably wasn't going to catch the top three. I mean, I question his strategy, but it looks like this, his strategy is going to get him an extra point that he wouldn't have gotten otherwise, so... Oh, man, maybe he knows what he's doing after all. Oh, well... So, uh, Speedman is living on a prayer right now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if his prayers are going to work out for him. He's, uh... Even if he gets the rain... Oh, no! There he goes! Speed and spins out in front of Chabar, avoids contact, and that is in turn 15. Does Speed and have a puncture? Like, I want to know what his tires are at right now. He's just... Zero grip. I mean, they gotta be... I mean, he doesn't have a puncture. I mean, they gotta be on... They gotta be on next to nothing at the moment. Yeah, they look, they look very bald. I think he's gonna be coming in. Oh, well, Speedin's got the pace. The rain holds off long enough, he could probably get past the slap. Why are you staying out? Come into the pits. Why are you staying out? There's I mean, no don't... need. <laughs> There's no right now, let's be... His race is shot right now, so the only thing he has to gain would be a fast slap point. And if it starts raining, well, I mean, let's be honest, he, um, he does have nothing to lose. At this point, I some guy has caught the swish. By the way, <laughs> oh man! Well, we said the race was spread out earlier, and it has gotten closer. And D swish just got a penalty to make things even closer. Didn't D swish lose a race? Did D swish win in Britain? No, yeah, he won Britain. So yeah, okay. yeah. I was gonna start to say he he lost the race because of that, but now. So now some guy can kind of relax. Obviously, he probably wants to be ahead of D Swish, but um, but yeah, and then some guy I think F1 nerd and D Swish, well F1 nerd at least, is gonna have the better tires towards the end. F1 nerd thinks gonna go for it right now. Here he goes. D Swish pinches him from the helicopter. Cam, we go. And D Swish gives him the space but gets the acceleration. This is not over between these two. Alright, are we going to see some DRS chicken here? Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, Pine just passed Connor in the same spot. Let's see if Connor can keep up. Yeah, this is going to be really annoying for. Pine, because Pine is definitely quicker right now. I, I think this is a losing battle, unless if some guy, it, unless if his pace falls off in the rain, which, I mean, just looking at the sky, I think we're going to get it before it's all said and done. Look at this, a switchback from Connor in the P4 he goes. Yeah, that's, that's something that Pine is probably... <laughs> 
screaming at why did we should have just been patient there because Pine is significantly faster than Connor right now. The yeah. Pine, you just gotta be be patient here. He's got the pace. I'm telling you, he's he's had a really good race. Uh, really, he's all three races. He's been in TCR this season. He's he's been competitive. I saw that. <laughs> I mean, really, everybody except some guy have drained the battery, and that must be a demoralizing feeling for the competition as uh, my pick. Looking pretty good right now. Well, I, sh I shouldn't say that. Knowing my history today with the commentator's curse, this might have been the worst day for commentator's cursing in a while. I remember season I mean, uh, 15 was bad for them. Yeah. 14 as well. And if you're Pine, you need to get past Connor here soon, because obviously the rain is coming. You had the pace. you got to feel like just one lap in front of Connor through sector 2 and 3, and Pine will be gone, especially with how old Connor's tires are at this point. You no know, five-lap old softs are definitely not fresh by You gotta keep in mind too, Charles, if these two keep holding each other up, Chavar could pounce. If he's got that penalty, but he could at least do something as Pine, uh, he wants to get this done pronto. As oh, rain. we have sprinkles, and this is where things are gonna get spicy. And the thing is too, like, we're late enough in the race where like, if it starts really raining, it's gonna be like, okay, do you risk hitting? Do you risk saying out how quickly is it gonna rain? How far is it gonna rain? Is it worth risking giving up? You know, almost 20 seconds to come in and put intermediates on. It's a really tricky spot for these drivers. It depends too, Charles, on how quickly it rains, because we know with this game, uh, there's times where Mother Nature literally dumps buckets of water on these guys. Yeah, I mean, it can change from sector to sector. And especially with how long this lap is, if you stay out for a lap longer than you should, uh, it's game over pretty much. You're going to lose so much time. Well, meanwhile, some guy is screaming at the heavens right now. Because he's got this race in the bag, more or less. But now, things are not so certain. You know, Charles, I'm really kind of questioning why he didn't go for the fastest lap. He's had every opportunity. He could have picked any lap to do it. And hes I don't think he's going to get it. I think the rain has already made an impact on the track to where he's not going to get it. I if he he's tried. He's to pull the trigger. I am surprised Pine is the first one to pull it, but hey, he, he, he always likes to, he, saw, he, he likes risking the strategy, so we'll see if it starts. It doesn't look like it's a typical Codemasters debut, though, so that's the problem. But I think this might backfire for Pine, but I mean, yeah, I mean, the only way this works out for Pine is if the heavens open at the right time, and I just don't see that happening at the moment, but the track is definitely a bit greasy. Yeah. F1 nerd demonstrates coming through, you know, three and four or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, speeding! Alright, well, I guess he finally did pit for softs. Just didn't make the time. And that will yeah. be that. See, we're saying some guy should have pitted, but I don't think it would have should have not pitted, but should have gone from a bad slap. I, I still think, think he I still think he should have. I think with how close things are between he and F1 Nerd, every point is crucial, and really, he, some guy is a good enough guy on the track to where he, I don't see him making a mistake trying to <laughs> trying to go for fastest lap. I will say, just looking at Shabar and looking at Pine, they are pretty darn even at the moment. Mmm. Wow. Just looking at the time between them, so... And, I, and the rain's only going to intensify here. So Pine, again, I'm questioning his strategy before. And everyone's staying out. Oh, if you're F1 nerd, you have enough of a gap behind. F1 nerd can't see what Pine's doing. So he probably doesn't know what the relative pace is of the entrance at the moment. But if you're F1 nerd, if he would have pitted right there, I think he could have been in a good spot. Like I said, only three laps to go. He said, even if Pine having relatively good pace... He needs the rain to intensify quickly 
for him to really gain back that time over the next three laps. Speeding gets a penalty. Not going to affect him in the running order, but... Yeah, you know, this is one of those scenarios that Pine will learn from, and he'll realize that, you know, not many laps left. Uh, you're not going to gain, gain time unless if things literally turn into torrential downpour, and I mean wet tire conditions. I think that's the only way he would be able to catch up to Chabar at this point. Although Chabar has a penalty, and you never know if he makes a mistake. F1 well, there's a the penalty. F1 Nerd had a huge tank slapper, and that'll cost him P2. And that's, that's another that's warning. Another... <laughs> yeah. Also, too, that's another three points in a championship. I mean, you know, the gap was going to grow by seven, now it's going to grow by ten. Again, like I said, it's only five rounds left after this. These guys are definitely thinking about it. Um, so I do want to point out, we don't have a sprint race until the finale, but TCR Grand Prix is next week, and that will have a special event. Uh, a few points are on the line in the five lap groups. Uh, we'll we'll get five into that are... next week. Yeah, those are always fun. Uh, I, I don't like them. <laughs> I've had a bad history with them. They're, they're stressful, but you know. Yeah. Oh. F1 nerd? Yeah, F1 nerd had a bit of a... Honestly, get to the point where you gotta think DRS could be getting disabled here. I mean, not that it really matters, like, the gaps between everybody, but that's usually the telltale sign that, hey, it is wet right now. We are pretty close to that point, I feel like. I don't know. I mean, I looked at F1 nerd, and he still was able to go flat out through Radeon. Which, by the way, bold strategy for him. If I were him, I would I would be going three fourths throttle at most through there right now. Ah, uh, he's uh yeah. I can see the grip getting worse. I'm I'm honestly shocked that he took Raddy on full throttle. That's yeah. I mean, <sighs> it's one of those things. I mean, he's got such a huge gap behind him. He can certainly afford to it, but at the same time, if he can keep the pressure on D Swish, you never know. D Swish could have two warnings right now, and that you know. That, that could just, you know, you just want to try and keep the pressure on the guys around you to see if they possibly make a mistake, especially, especially if as treacherous as the conditions are. But the rain has come, and some guy has continued to pull away, so. Using basically none of the battery, too. Impressive. This is, this is what some guy needed. Uh, with F1 Nerd closing the gap, uh, getting down into the later point of the season. Uh, he was on a bit of a drought. He won the first two races, had a couple of fourths in between, but uh, he's looking to get back in the win column. Final lap. Yeah, and unfortunately, Pine's going to be kicking himself. He just gave up. Potentially a P4 there. Um... And yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure what, because Pine wasn't really going to gain every, anything, so unless he saw anyone else pitting, I mean, again, if there's a deluge, he looks like a genius, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Well, obviously it hasn't happened. Well, at this point, just bring it home. Everybody just needs to bring it home. Uh... Some guy, his pace here in the wet on these soft tires, super impressive. He's pulling out quite a gap here on D-Swish. Shabar will end up P5. Uh, Pine usually finishes there, but Shabar will take that spot. A uh, Red Bull going to get the same amount of points as Alpine in Constructors. Uh, the Constructors Championship not as close, but that is something to look for. But some guy did everything right today. Went from the mediums to the softs, 
adapted to the rain, and he is going to get his third victory of season 17. Some guy wins the Belgium Grand Prix round nine. D Swish coming home, P2. F1 nerd. And Connor, who really seemed like he was struggling. He's got a puncture. Connor has a puncture. It's not going to matter, though. He doesn't have any penalties, but it's just, that's kind of interesting. Wow. Shabar P5. Pine coming home in six. Uh. Definitely the wrong call, but uh, was willing to take the risk. And I think right about now, those tires might have been quicker. But uh, still, I think he's probably surprised the rain didn't uh, arrive sooner as Speedin is going to pull a Ricky Bobby across the finish line. And again, Speedin will also get the fast slap. Waited to the last possible second, literally, to pull that off. Good news. We get a PlayStation Party interview today. Give it up. Thank you. <laughs> oh, look at that. Is that Mike Tyson? Or is that Jake Paul? No, please. <laughs> yeah. Don't, Don't Mike Tyson like all that. the way. There's no need to insult some guy like that. It's <laughs> and Pine, first one to bail out of the session. Hey, at least he did it before uh, or yeah. after. Because when you leave before the celebrations, the game will oh, DNF yeah. you. And that's a pain in the butt that's for so... Jabbar to do. Because he's the one that does the points. That's so annoying. Yeah. Uh, I think the only person I have on my friends is F1 Nerd. Who do okay. the, who 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 the other two? It's some guy and D Swish. Uh, I might have D Swish. Just one I had D Swish. I guess not. I guess not. Oh well. Mm. All right. Well, I can get them in for the podium interview. Which, by the way, I correctly predicted which drivers would finish on the podium. If anybody cares. Did you have them in the right order, though? No, I had F1 Nerd second and D Swish third. Womp womp. Ah, looks like some guy is, is here. First one to join the podium interview. We'll get the other guys in here. D Swish here? Alright, I did invite uh, F1 Nerd. There he is. Just waiting on our second place finisher and we can get this show on the road. D Swish is here. Oh, he is? Yep. Oh, all right. Well, you guys were quick. Uh, before we start, just make sure that your audio is shared. If you go in the party settings, there's an option for that. So just uh, make sure everything's all set uh, with that. But I think we will start with P3. Uh, F1 nerd, uh, it was looking like you might have been able to get P2 at the end. Uh, you and D-Swish weren't very close, but uh, you did get a penalty later on. Uh, how was the rain there at the end? Because it looked like the slicks were still faster at the end of the race. Uh, yeah, um, at the end I thought it was going to be enters, just because from what the race strategy was looking like, but I guess it came to, it was coming too light, so it never really switched over to enters. There wasn't really a, there was always like a dry line, so slicks were, slicks were good. It was, 
I was still pretty dry, I'd say. But yeah, uh, I just hit the wall, got some wing damage, and then uh, couldn't catch up to D switch after that. So, ah, oh. where was that? Right when I got my penalty, it's because I hit the wall. So, I it was the I don't know. Um, Huh. It's right before the left hander, like the fast left hander, the long so straight one. left hand. Yeah, he's so uh, no name. yeah, no name. Really, yeah. you hit the wall through there. Ah, uh, yeah, I kind of went on the power too fast, and then just kind of the car slid, and I smacked the wall on my right side. Hmm. Well, that yeah, would explain skill it. Issue. <laughs> Skill issue. Yep. I yeah. hate when that happens. <laughs> yep. Ha ha happens to the best of us, unfortunately. Yeah, sadly. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I have any other questions for you. Uh, I'm gonna. I usually steal too many of the questions from Charles. I have a bad habit <laughs> of doing that, so I'm just gonna hand things over to Charles. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I don't really have a whole lot. Um. But how was the uh, is how was the battles at the beginning and um, I don't know were you, ex were you basing your initial strategy off anticipating rain or um, I don't know what was your thoughts I guess at the beginning to race in terms of strategy and kind of those uh, battles there at the beginning. Uh, I mean, well, I I just took the normal strategy, the medium hearts. I was just gonna just go normal and. If the rain came, and then I'd switch over to enters, because the game always kind of makes us, uh, keeps us on the edge, and just never really tells us the reality, I guess. But uh, yeah, and then I mean the battles were nice. It was good battles. D Swish and some guy were really fast at the beginning, so it was tough keeping up with them. But then the VSC safety car, uh, the restart caught me off guard, and then Connor took advantage. So that was bad from my side, but it was it was good battles. Well, I think that's all I've got. Yeah, um, F1 Nerd, still still a good day. Uh, you get that podium. Uh, you do slip a little behind some guy in the championship uh, because some guy won the race. So uh, next week, though, I do want to mention next week is the TCR Grand Prix week, which means we'll have the five lapper to open up the show. So, uh, how are we feeling about Saudi Arabia? Um, it's a fun track. It's uh, high speed, uh, really, really fun to race on. But uh, it's kind of tough on controller. But uh, I'm excited. It's gonna be fun with, especially with uh, so many points on the on the line. So. I'll try and maximize the best I can, but uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun track. Right on. Well, uh, congrats on the P3, and uh, I, I did say before the race that uh, I probably would be talking to you after the race. So uh, <laughs> thanks for uh, helping me out, uh, making me look good. <laughs> yep, no problem. <laughs> All right. Congrats to some guy in these switch as well. Great race from them. Absolutely. Moving on up, up to P2, uh, D-Swish, you started P1 by a country mile. <laughs> Your qualifying lap was was really, really good. Uh, very, very quick. And you were looking to get a quick start off the line, uh, taking the soft tires and then going to the mediums. Uh, would you do things different with the strategy, considering that some guy kind of did the opposite of you? Hey, what's up, guys? Um, hey, what's up? Honestly, I don't think I would. For some reason, my tire wear was just insane. Like, the test race I did, I probably got, like, a third, one-third less tire degradation in that race than I did in this race. So I, I'm not really sure why, but, um, no, I definitely had to pace my time trial. I think I did, like, a 141.0. So... I had the pace, but I just at the end I got a three-second time penalty, and some guy I couldn't stretch the medium. Some guy was just too quick on those softs, especially in the rain. The softer compound always is faster, so yeah, yeah. That's still still a solid race from you, uh, considering last week you kind of had an off week. 
uh, finishing ninth at Imola, which obviously is <laughs> not something you do often. Um, how was the rain at the end for you? Um, do you were you still going flat out through Radion? Because I noticed there was a couple of people that were doing that. No, I wasn't. I had a little lift. My tires were at like 60, 65%. So I, I had to lift. Otherwise, I was going to lose the car through there. Yeah, I saw a couple of people. I think for the most part, they were flat out. If anything, they might have like taken their pinky toe off the throttle. Um, personally, I would not have taken that chance. Uh, there's, there's no way I would have risked being you know, that aggressive late in the race. Worn tires, rain. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, Charles, you got anything? Oh, uh, nah, I mean, I'll be honest, not re not really. I mean, it seemed like a you kind of just uh, was a pretty good race there. So I mean, it just kind of took off from the beginning, and yeah, I mean, congrats. And like I said, I'm it seems to be a regular theme having you on podium. So I'm sure. I'm sure I'll have some questions next time, which I'm sure there will be. So, um, yeah, I think you covered everything. Cause everything I wanted to know was strategy and rain. So, um, I do have one more question. I see that you're questionable for tomorrow. So, uh, last week your your pace actually was pretty good. You, you know, compared to a lot of the elite drivers. So, uh, what are we thinking? Are we getting another D Swish Wednesday appearance tomorrow? Um, probably. Last week I had pace because I completely changed my setup because my in the Challenger race, for whatever reason, my time trial setup with a couple of tweaks just didn't work. I had too much downforce, so yeah, I'll probably be at the race tomorrow. Awesome. Uh, well, I'll see you tomorrow night. I just, I just hope you'll be seeing me, and I won't be seeing you. If that makes sense, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, because you got me last week, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'd love to see it in Saudi Arabia. That's going to be an interesting uh, interesting race around there, that's for sure. Oh, um, did I see – hold on. Let me just double-check the group chat real quick. I just want to make sure I'm talking about the correct person. Um, well, there's been a lot of messages. Oh, no, that was David. Okay, so uh, David said that the next race was his birthday. Um, okay, I thought it might have been you, but uh, never mind. <laughs> let's, okay. let's move on to our race winner. Uh, for the first time since round two, some guy back in the win column, and you made it look easy. Uh, you did a medium soft, and even in the rain, it looked like you were still... Putting up heaters. Uh, where does Belgium rank on your track rankings? Firstly, I'll say hello. How are y'all doing tonight? Good. Pretty good. And this time I didn't avoid Charles this time, so there's a problem. <laughs> yes, Charles, he's what? here. What? He, he's not avoiding oh. you. He, he's in the interview. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But I would say Belgium would probably be like my top top three tracks because it's one it's very fun to go around through especially backwards i've done backwards before around belgium it's a doozy mm. and usually i would do like hard tires for the start of every race but since it said like soft to mediums i decided to do the opposite and do medium to soft so that way i would have the fresh tires for the end and also, I could get the fast slap as well, which I didn't get, sadly. Yeah, we, uh, I was actually, I made a comment, and this is going to be my next question. Um, we noticed you kind of kept a lot of your batteries, so were you, were you pushing for a fastest lap, or were you kind of, kind of pushing for it using a little battery, but, uh, you you weren't pushing as much as you could have for that fastest lap. I was saving a little bit. I wasn't pushing as much as I wanted to originally because I want to save a little bit just in case for like the end, in case the switch was still behind my gearbox. But I guess it kind of worked out in the end a little bit. 
I thought the rain was going to screw me over. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and we actually had one of the worst commentator curse moments. I made some sort of a comment that you should have pushed for that fastest lap um, because I didn't see a scenario to where anybody else would have gotten it at that point in the race. Two seconds later, uh, Pine puts in the fastest lap. <laughs> it was little commentator curse is still here. <laughs> It, uh, it never goes away, unfortunately. <laughs> no, sadly. Yeah. Uh, Charles, you got anything? I mean, I guess how stressful, how worried were you about the rain at the end? Because it seemed like, obviously, you had to race in hand. You probably didn't, obviously didn't want the rain because you were just going to ride off into the sunset. Um, of course, there was no sun, so, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, I guess how, how were you, how are you managing there at the end? Because obviously you kept pulling away, but um, how much was the rain kind of uh, concerning you there at the end? The rain wasn't really concerning me that much because I was doing a little bit of lifting and coasting through the corners as I go, not trying to get as much wheel spin and spin myself mm -hmm. out. Because if I'd done that, I would have been very frustrated at myself. I was trying to keep it PG there. Just in case. <laughs> I appreciate that. I say anything. Yep. <laughs> Make sure. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to lift and coast as I go. I was getting kind of low on fuel as well towards the end, but I ended up saving a good amount with that VSC coming out as well. All right, well, that's pretty much all I got. Like I said, you pretty much put on a clinic, and like I said, you know, extend your points lead. So, um, so yeah, congrats. And like I said, things are looking good going for. How are you feeling about next week? Uh, Saudi, I, uh, I don't like the S's for a controller. The S's are going to be a pain for me. Especially trying to keep it on track as well. All right. Um, Honestly, Charles, I feel like this was a short race. Well, if you thought it was going to be longer because <laughs> you, you thought we had a sprint yeah. for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, that was kind of, I don't know where I got that from, but hey, uh, I mean, it was one of the shorter <laughs> races, pretty high speed around here, and only 22 laps. I mean, just a shorter race in terms of laps, so. I'm not going um, to feel like Bahrain all over again for me, just being by myself most of the time. Well, I mean, that wasn't a bad thing, this race, but... Um, <laughs> But yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah, it seemed by it went by pretty quick, but yeah, uh, pretty good race. Like I said, it was some intriguing strategy, especially with the rain likely coming towards the end. So, oh uh, yeah, it'll be interesting, and obviously next week's gonna be very interesting with a street circuit as well as like I said the the five lappers at the beginning. So we'll see how that shakes things up. up. Yeah, so next week is TCR Grand Prix week, so. We will have some five lappers before the 50% races for both Challenger and Elite. Uh, I'm not sure if we're keeping the Platinum format for Elite, but if we are, I think we're going to have two five lappers for the Elite series, followed by a 50%. So uh, that race, that race is going to be long, and I'm just glad we didn't do a 100% race for that because <laughs> there was talks about that, and I was very much against that because I don't feel like doing a three hour race and broadcast in the same week. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that, certainly. especially I, I just don't want a hundred percent race at Jeddah seems like a, there's too many opportunities to hit the wall. That's all I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially for controller people. Uh, I, I can't imagine mm -hmm. what they're going to go through. Yeah. Of course, Jetta is, you know, speaking of quick races, Jetta is probably the shortest race time-wise, at least for a 50% race, so. I'm only 25 laps and really fast lap time, so. That is a good point. Uh, but tomorrow, we are back here for the Elite Series in Belgium. Next week is Saudi Arabia, and then uh, we get to go on a little vacation the following week. Next week, or the, the week after next week is the second and final break week of the season. And then we will wrap things up with four races after that. So uh, make sure to check that out in the coming weeks. But 
that will do it for tonight. My name is Camden Luca. That is Sir Charles. And we will see you next week in Saudi Arabia. Have a good night.